Sorry, Unreal Engine. Unity's just more stable. Hi everybody, it's Virtual Rook, and I'm here with another game development video. I know, it's crazy. We're up to like three now. Oh my god, stop. But that being said, we do have something serious to talk about. So, a couple weeks ago was the VR Game Jam, which is being held by Justin P. Barnett. Uh, I believe they're doing it like once a year, but it's a virtual reality game jam. If you don't know what a game jam is, uh, it's just where like you have a time limit to make a game. You can build a group of people and there's usually prizes and it's awesome. And also it's just very exciting because it's a chance for, you know, VR users to make new VR content, which is always awesome. And I will link the final submissions uh, down below. So just check down in the video description area and I'll have link a link to that, as well as a link to the channel where the game jam gets announced every year. Anyway, I decided I was going to participate because I've been practicing really hard in Unreal Engine, you know, getting super good. Like I showed you in my last video, I was, you know, at least had something functional, so I figured it was time to try to make an actual game, and what better time to do it than in a game jam. Mm, but... <laughs> Unreal Engine 5.2 decided to just completely shit the bed on me. It got to the point where I couldn't even run the VR template project, like just the base bare minimums VR project, without Unreal Engine completely crashing on me every single time. It kind of looked a little bit like this every time I tried to run it. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. And I was heartbroken. I'm not gonna lie, I was like actually heartbroken. Um, it felt like I had wasted my time. It felt like I was never going to be able to do the things that I want to do. And I was just in a bad place. But then I just kind of thought about it and I was like, you know, the only reason that I never used Unity was because I'm scared of the programming side of it. I don't like the idea of looking at code. Um, it just never clicks in my brain whenever I try to learn code. It just looks like a spaghetti. <laughs> but I decided to press on. I, I knew that learning a new program was going to make it that there was no possible way that I could actually submit something in time for the game jam. But I figured that if I start now, by next year, whenever the game jam happens, I might be good enough at Unity that I can actually submit something. So I got looking for VR tutorials for Unity. And and I found Valim Tutorials, which I will also link Valim Tutorials down below. If you are interested in learning VR stuff, their channel is absolute gold. Like, it is amazing. <laughs> and I started crushing through their videos, and I've crushed through quite a lot of their videos. But uh, real quick, I'm just going to go over why I think that I have been shooting myself in the foot this whole time, uh, trying to learn Unreal Engine, whenever I should have just been learning Unity. So, why is Unity so much easier to get started in VR than Unreal Engine is? Unity has an XR toolkit that I believe is made by them, or maybe it is community made, but it is hands down just exactly what you need to get up and running for VR. And I think that's something that Unreal Engine really lacks is like their VR stuff is fine, but like it feels very thrown together and it's very confusing if you want to change anything or like even just making it like possible to set up menus to switch snap turning or smooth locomotion or oh god i remember i was trying to learn how to make it that there was a collision uh area around the character that adjusted its size based off of whether or not the player was crouching or standing so that way if they had to crawl underneath something they couldn't just walk through you know they had to actually crouch and go underneath it and i remember that this caused nothing but headaches in unreal engine it was like a week of coding and even then like my origin point would get all messed up so whenever I would rotate with the analog stick it'd still be rotating based off of the point like the original movement axis of where I was standing before and it was it was very bad. In Unity it's just set up. You, you literally just like plug in your camera. I, I think you put like a XR collision or something like that on it. I'll have to check again. Um, and it just works instantly. Uh, it took me 10 minutes maybe. And that's one of the really nice things about the Unity XR plugin is that like there 
is no code, or well, there's very, very little coding. Like, if you do the Valim to, like, getting started in VR tutorials for Unity, there's so little coding. Like, I had to write, like, seven codes, essentially. Um, and each one of those was only, like, four or five lines tops. And Valim also does a really, really, this is mostly just me, uh, crushing over Valium and how awesome their tutorials are. They just really do a great job explaining what it is that you're having the code do. And in just such contrast, Unreal Engine's problem is that there's only code. Like, everything that you want to do has to be through blueprints. And if you get one thing wrong, it screws up everything. And sometimes you, it feels like you don't get anything wrong and it still screws up. And that's just to set up basic VR functions that you would expect in every VR game. It not, it's just very frustrating. So again, it, it just feels like, it feels like it took me less than a week to get a functioning prototype in Unity that would have taken me months of studying Unreal to get a buggy version of what I have right now. It just feels like Unity cares about VR developers. Like, it really wants them to have a good experience, especially if they're just getting started. And it feels like Unreal Engine just doesn't care. Like, they have so many other things that they're working on with their program that VR has, like, been on the back burner for ages. And, I don't know, it, it just feels very nice. It makes me feel like I'm not going crazy. It makes me feel like I actually do know what I'm doing as a VR developer because I don't have to jump through so many hoops to get something off the ground. So that's a long-winded way of saying that I switched. I switched over to Unity. I don't know if I'll go back to Unreal. I probably still will dabble. I mean, I can't help it. Lumen and uh, Nanite are like crack to me. I like learning about them and I don't know if I'll make VR games in Unreal Engine, but I'll probably still make my fun little silly stupid games over there. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let's go take a look at what I actually have gotten to work in Unity, because it's been a fun process, and I've created something very silly but fun. <laughs> and there you go, everybody. This is, uh, what I've been working on after spending about a month in Unity. Uh, let's take a look at all the stuff that I've managed to get. First of all, these just come pre-ready in Unity. Oh, well, oh, I also have that set up. Um, so... I, I got my grippy hands, which is nice. I, I feel like that took a long time in Unreal, but who knows? Um, we also have teleport, well, shoot. We also have teleport as you saw, which I mean, every good game needs, I suppose. Uh, it could be like a jump mechanic, kind of like how it does in Half-Life Alex. But fun fact, remember how in Unreal Engine, I was like always struggling with actually getting the catwalk C to work with my projects. I don't know why, but it wouldn't let me like do smooth locomotion with my catwalk C. In Unity, it just freaking works. I can just run just like I would in any other VR game, which is just, it's the best. I do still have smooth locomotion, or sorry, smooth turning, as you can see there. I also can press a menu button and come into here to get snap turning, if that's your fancy. I can't take any Credit for the skybox. The skybox was something that I got off of the Unity store. Same with the textures for the ground and the walls. Those were free stylized textures that I got off of Unity. But everything else, oh, not everything else, the table is also from the stylized textures. I made the barrels as I think you saw, maybe? I made the bushes, I made the targets, and I made the things on the table. Let's go and take a look at those. <laughs> so, things on the table, we have a box. It just changes color. I can't do anything with it. We also have another box that uh, has one of the types of physics from that tutorial that I was following by Valim. This is the one where it's like not as smooth. It's not like keeping track of its position every second. And apparently it doesn't like having physics with the ground. Um, and then this box is the one that does have very nice, like fast physics calculations, which I think, yeah, that one doesn't go through the ground. We also have a gun, probably my favorite thing that I made. It's the super low poly gun, and if you listen very carefully. And I believe they don't have physics on my hands, but anything that does have physics, they hit off of, which apparently are not the bushes right now. But you can see they hit off of the back wall, and they hit off of the target. <laughs> Um, and then we have a uh, spooky. Ah. 
we have the spooky times haunted house real real pain haunted house in real pain uh this is a little newspaper i made again for my game uh that i'm hopefully going to be able to start making now which is the haunted uh paper boy which you will be learning more about as time goes on but it's gonna have this kind of fun stylized look which i think will be a lot of fun. All right, everybody, but that's it for the video. I hope that this was okay. I know it was a little short. If you started following this channel because I was a VR dev for Unreal Engine and there aren't many of them, and now I kind of know why, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you'll stick around because I still plan on, you know, making a game for VR and journaling about that. And uh, I'm just, I'm very excited. I think it's gonna be a good change of pace and I hope to see you in the next video. I hope to see you in the next video soon, like next week. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Please subscribe, we are so close to 400. Oh my gosh, we're so close to 400, it's awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, have a great one, everyone. Bye for now.